Hey everybody, um, today we're going to talk about solving quadratic equations by factoring. Um, so we've been working on factoring trinomials and one of the reasons we wanted to know how to factor is so that we could use it to solve quadratic equations and that's what we're going to be covering now. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and do a little bit of a review of the key features of quadratic functions. So I'm going to take this function here and you notice we know it's a quadratic because we've got that x squared, right? So we're going to take f of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 8. And the graph of this function looks like this. So it's a curve. And remember, if you recall, that curve is called a parabola. And it had a few key features that we had talked about earlier. So just to review that, one, parabolas have in the middle, this what we call the axis of symmetry. Um, and what it is is each side of the curve is equidistant from that axis. So we have this exact same distance from the curve to that line and, and then across to the other side. So that's the axis of symmetry in this particular function. Um, it, the axis of symmetry occurs at x equals negative 1. Okay. Where the axis of symmetry crosses the parabola, we call that the vertex. And if you see here, because our parabola is opening upwards, um, the vertex is the lowest point on our graph. So in this case, it is a minimum, and our vertex is the point negative 1, negative 9. Okay. And then we also have a y-intercept. So that's that point where it's crossing the y-axis. So you can see down there it's crossing a y-axis where y equals negative 8. And so x always equals 0, where it's crossing the y-axis. So it has the point 0, negative 8. And then the really important key features that are going to matter to us today are the x-intercepts. And so if you remember, x-intercepts, in this case, we have negative 4, 0, and 2, 0. So x-intercepts, y always equals 0, right? But they have other names. Because y equals 0, we call them the zeros, or we can call them the solutions, or the roots. So our x-intercepts can be called any one of those three, zeros, solutions, and roots. And the reason that we can call them zeros and solutions and roots is because that's what we're looking for. And that's when we when we talk about solving a quadratic equation. So let's go ahead and work on solving that. And you're going to notice that our roots or our zeros or our solutions, our x-intercepts, have a relationship to factors when we factor the quadratic equation, when we factor that trinomial. So using the same function, right, f of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 8. If we factor that, if we were to go through the steps of factoring that, we get the two binomials x plus 4 times x minus 2. Now, if you notice, our solutions are negative 4 and 2. Those are the x values for our x-intercepts. So we have negative 4 and 2, right? And I just want you to take a look at that. What do you notice between the solutions and the factors? And hopefully you notice that the numbers are the same, but the signs are different. So up here in the factor, we have a positive 4, and the solution is a negative 4, right? Up here in the factor, we have a negative 2, and the solution is a positive 2. So our factors actually are just the opposite of our solutions in the sign. And here's why that works. Remember, x-intercepts are also called zeros. So if we were to set each of these factors to zero. So here I get x plus 4 equals zero, right? Or I can have x minus 2 equals zero. So if I set both of those to zero and if I was to solve for x, on this top one we would subtract 4 from both sides, so I would get x equals negative 4, which is the solution here. Or if I have x minus 2, right, I would get x plus 2 gives me, I mean 0 plus 2 gives me positive 2. So that would be this one over here. And that's why the solutions are the opposite signs of our factors. And so when we factor it, we can find our solutions by taking those opposite signs. So let's go ahead and do a couple examples. So our first example is we have the function f of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 4. So we're going to go ahead and factor that in order to solve it. So in order to factor, if you recall, we need to find our a, b, and c values. So a is the coefficient of the x squared. That's 1. Right? b is the coefficient of the x to the power of 1, so that's negative 5. And c is that constant term, so that's plus 4. And then we're going to go ahead and draw our x to do our x puzzle or our diamond puzzle. Remember, it goes a times c goes in the top. So if I take a times c, that's 1 times 4, which gives me 4. 
And then we take our V value and put it in the bottom. So that's negative five. So it's gonna go right there in the bottom. All right, and then I have to solve this puzzle for the side. So remember, we need to come up with those numbers so that these two side numbers multiply together to be four, but add together to be negative five. So if I take all the factors of four, I can do one times four, but then if I do one plus four, I get positive five, not negative five. But if I do negative one times negative four, right, together they'll multiply to be positive four, but add to be negative five. So those are my two solutions, negative four and negative one. And those are gonna go in the sides. So right now, we normally when we factor, we then divide by our A value, but A is one, so we don't have to do any dividing right now because it's just one. So these are gonna be what I'm gonna do for my factor. So I'm gonna have one X, right, or X minus four, and I'm gonna have X minus one. So these are my factors, X minus four and X minus one. So now my solutions are just gonna be the opposite of these. So my solutions are now set of negative four, it's gonna be positive four, and instead of negative one, it's gonna be positive one. So if you look from the side pieces here, we have negative four, switches to a positive four for our solution. We have a negative one, it switches to a positive one for our solution. Okay, you can also graph it. So here we have this function graphed, and we can just look to see, indeed it is crossing at positive one and positive four. So we get x equals four and x equals one, and those are our two solutions or our two zeros, or our two roots, or the x-intercepts. All right, so looking at our next example, we're gonna do the function g of x, and that's gonna equal x squared plus seven x minus 30. So we're gonna go ahead and factor that. So in this case, a equals one, b equals positive seven, c equals negative 30. So we're gonna go ahead and do our x puzzle. a times c goes up on top. So one times negative 30 is negative 30. B goes in the bottom. So B is seven. So now I'm looking for factors of negative 30 that are gonna add together to be seven. So if I take a positive 10 times a negative three, I'm gonna end up with negative 30. And if I take positive 10 plus negative three, I'm gonna end up with a positive seven. So those are gonna be my two sides, a positive 10 and a negative three, okay? So again, A is one, so I don't have to divide it out. So I can just go ahead and write my factors as X plus 10 times X minus three. And once again, our solutions are just gonna change the signs from there. So on the side piece, we have a positive 10, which means our solution becomes a negative 10, right? And the other solution on our side piece, it was a negative three, which means it's gonna become a positive three. Okay. Again, I'm just going to show the graph on this to show you can also graph it to check, right? And it's crossing the x-axis at negative 10 and at 3. All right, so now that was with a equaling 1, but now we're going to talk about functions where a doesn't equal 1. So in this case, now we have a value here other than 1. So we have a value of 2, and we're going to use the function f of x equals 2x squared plus 13x plus 21. So again, we're going to start by factoring. So I'm gonna find my A, B, and C. So A equals two, right? B equals 13, and C equals 21. So we're gonna go ahead and do our X puzzle. A times C goes up on top, so two times 21 is 42. And then B goes down into the bottom, so B equals 13. And then we're looking for those two numbers that multiply together to get to 42 and add together to get to 13. So if I take six times seven, that's 42, and six plus seven is 13. So I've got both a seven and a six, right, as my factors, but this time I have an A value. And so to finish this puzzle out, I have to divide by that, each side by that A value. So we're gonna take both of those and divide those by two, since A equals two. And then I'm gonna go ahead and reduce. So seven halves, I can't reduce it. That's simplified as far as it can go, but I can do six divided by two and that's gonna be three. So now I can go ahead and write my factors. Remember when we have a fraction on these side pieces, you remember that phrase bottoms up. So we take the bottom first. So this is gonna be a two, that's what we're gonna put with the X. So I'm gonna get two X plus seven. And then my other factor, there's just a one under there, so I'm just gonna have x 
plus 3. So my factors are going to be 2x plus 7 and x plus 3. And when I look at my solutions, I can go, since, since I have 2x here, I only want 1x. So I would have to divide that 2 out again, or I can just look at these side pieces and just take the opposite on that x puzzle, the side pieces on the x puzzle. So in my solutions, the opposite of 7 halves and the opposite of 3, I'm going to get negative 7 halves and negative 3. So I'm going to get x equals negative 7 halves and x equals negative 3. We're going to go ahead and do one more example. So on this one, g of x equals 6x squared minus 7x plus 2. Again, we're taking our, we have to identify our a, b, and c value to factor it. So a is 6, right? b is going to be negative 7, c is going to be positive 2. And then we're going to go ahead and fill out our x puzzle. So the very top, I get a times c. So that's 6 times 2 is 12. And the bottom is going to be b. So that's negative 7. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be positive 12, but add to be negative 7. So if I look at that, and I'm going to get negative 3 and negative 4. So those are now going to be my solution. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. And negative 3 plus negative 4 is negative 7. Okay. But again, I have an A value other than 1. So I have to divide both of these by that A value. So I'm going to take both of those and divide by 6. And then I'm going to go ahead and reduce it since both of these can be reduced. So negative 3, 6 is going to reduce down to negative 1 half. Negative 4, 6 is going to reduce down to negative 2 thirds. So when I go to write my factors, remember it's bottoms up. So we take the bottom first. So this 2 is going to become 2x and then minus 1. And then the next one is going to be the 3. So we take 3x minus 2. So I get 2x minus 1 times 3x minus 2. So those are my factors. And again, I think it's easier to pull your solution straight from your x puzzle. So if we go back, we have negative 1 half and we get negative 2 thirds. So remember, your solutions are the opposite. So instead of negative 1 half and negative 2 thirds, our solutions are going to be positive 1 half and positive 2 thirds. All right, so that is how we use factoring to help us solve quadratic equations. As I said, we can take our, our factoring. Our solution is going to be our side pieces if we're using those X puzzles. Just remember to always switch the sign on your solution. So if it's negative inside of the X puzzle, it's going to be positive as a solution. And if it's positive inside of the X puzzle, then it's going to be negative as a solution. All right, guys, have a great day.